Hello friends, let us learn some important points about the amino acid histidine. This histidine is a neutral amino acid and sorry, histidine is a basic amino acid and it has an imidazole ring. This histidine has a ring called as imidazole ring is present in this histidine. Okay, it is something, one minute, I'll draw it again. Yeah, this is the ring which you see in histidine called as imidazole ring is present in histidine. Normally, the valency of nitrogen is 2, but in, is 3, is 2, but in imidazole ring, the valency of nitrogen in imidazole ring is 3. That is 2 nitro, 2, 2, 2 val, mean, 2 valencies are already occupied by the ring, whereas the third valency is occupied by this hydrogen ion. So in imidazole ring, the valency is 2. Sorry, it is 2. Because it is in the ring, and this is 3. Okay. So it is 3 because it has 3 valencies occupied. Fine. Now, because this is a less polar amino acid and it is a basic amino acid and this histidine is a semi-essential amino acid and this histidine has maximum buffering capacity is present for this histidine. These are some one-liners. It is basic amino acid, less polar amino acid, it is semi-essential amino acid and it has maximum buffering capacity. Now, if you see the synthesis of this histidine. So, we don't need to learn the synthesis of histidine because it is a semi-essential amino acid which is obtained from the diet. So, what we should learn is what are the compounds which are produced from histidine. Histidine forms some special compounds like it gives rise to histamine. It is a precursor for histamine. Histidine also forms sarcosine. Then histidine is degraded to uracemic acid which in turn forms formaminoglutamate which will again form give rise to glutamate. During this conversion of formaminoglutamate to glutamate there is tetrahydrofolate gets converted to formamino tetrahydrofolate. Okay, one thing you should see, all these are not necessary. What you should definitely remember is histidine forms histamine. Then all the one-liners, basic amino acid, less polar, semi-essential, having maximum buffering capacity. This is important. And one more important thing is this histidine at the end, it gives rise to glutamate. And there is formaminoglutamate which is an intermediate. This step is important. Conversion of formaminoglutamate to glutamate occurs in the presence of tetrahydrofolate. Why is it important? This is because in a condition where there is this tetrahydrofolate is folic acid. If there is folic acid deficiency, Due to anything, if there is folic acid deficiency, then we can do a test called as histidine load test. In this histidine load test, we give the patient to take histidine. Once he takes histidine, histidine gets converted to uramic acid and uramic acid, uracemic acid, uracemic acid gets converted to formamino glutamate in his blood. Now, from formaminoglutamate to get converted to glutamate, we require tetrahydrofolate. Here the patient has 
folic acid deficiency. So obviously this tetrahydrofolate uh, is absent. So this conversion is not seen. So in histidine load test, if you see FIGLU levels, that is formiminoglutamate levels in urine, then we call it has, then it is positive for folic acid deficiency. If there is no formiminoglutamate levels, then obviously there is no folic acid deficiency. So this histidine load test is necessary for folic acid deficiency and if there is folic acid deficiency, you will find the increase in levels of formaminoglutamic acid. So this is about histidine. Thank you guys for watching my lecture. Thank you.